Hi guys, Captain Nick here with Marine Max St. Pete. Of course, uh, Captain Keith here at Marine Max Clearwater. Hey guys. And we're gonna do a quick Q&A session. We're gonna shoot it to you straight. We're in no rush. Beautiful day out on the water. Got structure C behind us and we're gonna get your questions answered. Structure C, what's that mean? I don't know, A, B, C. It's just what they call it. <laughs> so, yep, you're right. These are the Bayway bridges around here, and you're right, A, B, C, D, E. Um, if you had to ask for a bridge opening, you know, instead of saying Tierra Verde Bridge, you know, you say Structure E. So as you're pulling up with your boats and you look at the side there, you see that little blue lightning bolt, and then there'll be like the name of the bridge there. So you can call it by the name and or the structure. But if you look on your NOAA charts, you're right. So Structure C, which is behind us, connects St. Pete Beach mm -hmm. to the mainland. And just over to the east of us would be E. So there's five of them in this area. And you're right, they're all they're all labeled. But you wouldn't need to call for openings on any of those anymore, right? Anymore. Now that they got the Structure E's now giant. Yep, brand new pretty bridge right here behind us. This used to be a drawbridge. Now it's a fixed bridge. So it's got 64, 65 foot, something like that clearance at high tide. So. Plenty of room. Anyway, so uh, we got some questions. We're gonna just kind of hang out here and try to roll through them. All right, Nick, one of the questions is, what's the best way to learn to drive a boat? Just do it, be confident. It's like, uh, you know, the first time that you drove a car, you were probably nervous, you didn't know what was going on. Um, a lot of people are like, hey, I don't know if this is a big deal. I've never driven a boat before. I love hearing that, because that means that there's no bad habits. You're gonna Correct. learn everything the right way. So there's a number of courses out there that you can just get your fundamentals down. And once you have those fundamentals down, just doing it, getting comfortable behind the wheel and just kind of making it second nature so you're not hesitating, you're really not thinking, you're just doing what comes naturally. Yeah, but what are some courses that you recommend, Keith? Well, well, the courses are like Florida's got the How to Boat Smart Guide. Um, I've got them at our store. I get them out. We, I use them in all my classes and stuff like that. Coast Guard Auxiliary, Power Boat uh, Squadrons and stuff like that. A lot of places you can go and, and take courses. Um, but going back to like, that's an advantage to buy a boat from Marine Max, right? I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years at Marine Max Clearwater. I don't know how many thousands of boats I delivered. And, you know, everybody starts at some time or other, you know, and you get somebody in there and that they're totally new. And that's part of the draw, you know? They're gonna get a captain's orientation from me or one of our other captains around the country. So it's just start slow, get on the boat. We're gonna go nice and easy. You figure out how much throttle to give it, um, you know, the aspects of getting the boat on plane. And then the, the big thing's docking. We come in, you only wanna go as fast as you wanna hit something. There's some, some methods and stuff like that, shifting and turning, which I teach and we go through. But uh, right now, this, this pandemic and the way things have been going, I mean, boat sales are through the roof. There are more boaters out on the water than ever and green boaters. So it's just, uh, it's a great, great idea to take a class. Get your boat from Marine Max. Let us train you and teach you. If something's not making sense, you're not getting the feel for it, get hold of me or one of our other captains and we'll come out and, and try to help you out. But uh, like I said, it's just like when you were a little kid riding a bike, right? You start out with the training wheels, then you go down to the end of your driveway, then you make it down to the end of your street, then the next week you're going around the block. And then after that, forget it, you know, you're off and you're going. And that, that all incorporates with the use of the chart plotter and all the rest of the tools that you've got available to you. It's amazing how quick people pick it up too. It's like a complete novice boater, never owned a boat before, never operated a boat before. Proper training, proper experience is gained and uh, you know, like even over a time frame of six months. And, and it's one of those things that's kind of tough to explain until you do it. And it's like, you look back like where you were six months when you just took delivery of your boat and it's like, man, like, you know, it's not even a thought for me to go out now to a restaurant or to the sandbar or something. It's just, it's part of your life. And you got four foot itis and you're ready for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Keith, so we talk about joystick all the time. I make the joke. Hey, joysticks put all the captains out of business. That's why I had to start selling boats. What are your thoughts on joystick? Is it something that you might think you're too good for, or do you think that it really is helpful out on the water? No, by, it's helpful by far. I mean, it's a tool in your toolbox. You should use it. 
Um, it gives you such precise control now. I mean, especially now, I mean, there's, there was versions, you know, one, two, three, four. I mean, they've got these things tweaked in so good right now. Um, they actually probably run better, you know, using the joysticks and the variable RPMs and, and, and moving stuff around. Um, I can't wait. I haven't run a 600 yet. I know we've got some yeah. boats coming with those. I mean, those. those were designed around a joystick. And, you know, that's going to be super smooth from what I hear. But, um, you know, you still, even with outboards, if, if you've got the joystick or stern drives, as long as your engines are straight, I mean, you can still go back and, and do it, you know, the, the stick way and stuff like that. But, but it's not cheating. It's what it's there for. And the way we bring them in, it's got your autopilot built into it, your sky hook, uh, your heading hold, follow route. I mean, I mean, all those features that you don't have to pay for by adding on to a different system. I used to, when I first started moving boats around the marina when I was a dock in, you know, you'd move dozens of boats a day, and I used to think I was too cool, hey, I'm too good, you know. Just use the sticks, don't let any cool. of the captains <laughs> notice me. I, I, after a while, that gets old. And I say if you have the tools, use them. You have the tool in your toolbox, use it. And uh, your joystick can get you out of a lot of jams, too, and, and, and I think it's a great tool. Yamaha's got a great joystick. Mercury has a phenomenal JPO system, which goes beyond a joystick, like you said. And and it's definitely kind of taking all the fear out of docking, which is where most of the fear comes through. Boating in general is you know bringing the boat not only off the dock but back into the dock. It's definitely simplified everything. So if you got it, use it. Somehow in our inbox, we got a question about naming your boat and. How do you name a boat and why should you name it this or why should you name it that? Now, Nick's not one to hold back, so I know he's got some uh, really good opinions on this. All right, I'm gonna burst a lot of happy bubbles here. Be careful, you it, got a lot of customers, buddy. If, if, <laughs> if there's nothing wrong with a little bit of play on words, maybe a not real, naughty gal, nautical, Sorry, you're not the first one to think of it. There's probably a thousand of them out there. And that's another question that we get a lot too. Hey, can we name my boot something that somebody else has their name? Yeah, absolutely. There's a thousand real deals out there. There's a hundred not realies out there. If you like the name, you see another boat out there with it, nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and use it. And I've, I've, uh, I've got three YOLOs going in this last <laughs> week. <laughs> well, Yolo, Yolo, Yolo is a popular one. Um, yeah, and, and, and also, have, what's, have fun with yeah. it. Who cares? It's your boat. Name it what you want. You yeah. know, you want to be, you know, real naughty or real bear or this or that or whatever. It's play on words. Go have fun with it. Don't sweat it. It's your boat. And just remember, though, if the Coast Guard's looking for you or other people got to call you on the radio, that's what they're going to be calling you. So there's there's some names that I, we can't say on this to keep it PG, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's up to you. All right, but, but in actuality, a lot of these boat names really do have deep personal meaning to people. I mean, a lot of the boats I've delivered, you know, it's named after maybe a son or a daughter that's passed away or their grandparents or, or they were able to afford that boat because of an inheritance or something, so they name it after them to remember them and honor them. Um, boat names are, are, are unique, so like I said, you know, make it yours, make it fun, make it have sentimental value. You know, so, you know, I don't know. We're naming a boat, you know, the other line. Where are you? On the other line. Yeah. You know, job site. I fished on that boat for years, right? Where are you at? We're out on the job site. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's make it fun. We had Gabriel, one of the other sales guy in our office, name his boat Prospecting. So whenever he was playing hooky and Joshua called and asked where he was at, he'd say, well, I'm prospecting right now. Yeah. That means he was on his boat. He wasn't making sales calls, <laughs> so, but hey. What it's all about nothing wrong with inside jokes naming your boats and uh, you know speaking of naming boats another question we get is renaming boats also yeah bad luck superstition we'll get into it in another episode a lot of times that's done with a christening properly naming a boat breaking a bottle of breakable champagne over the bow whatever yep it is. don't use a real bottle don't use the real bottle of the alcohol abuse and uh, fiberglass repair and fiberglass repair too so uh yeah, that's how you would rename them. But, but there are, you can Google it. There are ceremonies, so like you've got to take the old name off. 
Then if you have the new name put on, you've got to keep it covered until like the actual christening ceremony and, and the whole thing. So um, there are a lot of traditions and, and, and things like that that people really do want to follow along. So it's uniquely yours. All right, today we're going to be talking about boating superstitions. I don't believe in any of them. I say you make your own luck, luck whether it's fishing, boating, don't let any of that ruin your good day, but there's some great stories nonetheless. Um, what are some that you've heard, Keith? Well, I'm not big into the superstitions either, and we were talking about this before we're going with this video here, but I think everybody knows about bananas on a boat, right? You're not supposed to have bananas on a boat? No. Why? There's three stories, and I hope you guys have a lot of time. <laughs> um, we're gonna go from the most crazy ones to the one that probably makes the most sense. First one being that, you know, back in the 1700s, there's a cargo ship and the bananas, the banana boats, they had to get there quick because down in a hold, bananas go rotten, they ferment, bad news. So that happened one time and all the bananas fermented down below. Somebody lit a match and the ship exploded. And then when they came across the ship, it was just, you know, an explosion with a bunch of banana peels and dead bodies everywhere. That's one, I don't know if that happened or not. Two, it was a, another cargo ship in the 1700s or 1600s. Could have been the same one, different one, I don't know. Curing bananas again. And there was banana spiders on board. And the banana spiders got a hold of the crew, ended up biting them all, killing them all. And when people came across the boat and it was a bunch of dead bodies and bananas, it was bad luck. Third one, which is what I think is the most realistic. Because of these explosive bananas fermenting, right? They had to get there quick. And they used to fish, they used to troll off the back of these boats, transatlantic, transpacific, whatever it is. and they would troll. Except on the banana boats, they were going faster than all the other boats, so the bananas didn't spoil. And they were trolling a little too fast to catch fish. So the banana boats were always the ones that you didn't catch the fish behind. And uh, they said, hey, you can't catch fish on a boat carrying bananas. So that's, that's where those three come from. Whichever one you want to believe, leave it up to yourself. I'll bring bananas on a boat. I'll eat bananas while fishing. I don't care. But um, some people actually believe it still. They actually do believe it. So I think I've actually ridiculous. seen a captain friend of ours eating a banana, hooking a Snickers bar up to a hook, <laughs> throwing it out, and catching Amberjack <laughs> on a Snickers bar. I don't, I don't so uh, anyway, yeah, bananas, they're fine. <laughs> The list goes on and on too. I mean, don't step, don't step left foot on a boat first. Ironically enough, there's another one. Don't step right foot on a boat first. So I don't know. Jump on the boat. You name it. Um, don't leave port on a Friday. That's a popular one. Still, a lot of big shrimpers and stuff won't leave on Fridays. The list goes on and on. Go ahead, look it up. Bottom line, make your own luck. Be safe. Watch an episode of Boating Tips Live or two, and you'll be in good shape. So, what do you say, Keith? So I, don't, so I don't know, Nick, I'm not a big believer in superstitions. So, I mean, I never even heard right foot, left foot or any of that other stuff. So you guys out there watching this, drop it in the comments or send us an email. If we don't get it, somebody behind the scenes will. What are some of the superstitions you've heard? All right, what should fishing beginners know? Now there's very fine line, Keith, of standing on the shore or in your new boat with a shrimp on a popping court with a steel leader and not catching anything and also the guy that is in the relatively same area and catching a bunch of fish chances are that guy started out he hired a local guide a charter captain somebody that does it professionally learn how to do things the right way there's a bunch of seminars too at your local bass pro shops dicks mm -hmm. similar to the classes that we'll teach for boating um, learn, be open to learn, don't get stuck in your ways, learn from somebody better than you, you're going to maximize the time on the water so you're not, one, getting frustrated, two, wasting your time. That's what I have to say about that. For beginners? Yep. Don't be late to the boat. Yep. You're going to be left standing on the dock. Ask questions, but don't <laughs> ask a ton of questions to where you're annoying. <laughs> um, once you get out there, don't be asking, what time are we going back in? No. What time are we get back to the dock? 
How long are we gonna stay out here? Yeah, don't, don't say you have a tea time at two o'clock. If you're not feeling good, eat. Keep your head up out of the cabin, watch the horizon. If you get sick, you tough it out. You don't whine and cry. I wanna go home, I'm sick, I don't like this, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, you get back to the dock. You don't go jump in a pool and hang out and watch TV in the, in the, in the patio or whatever. You know, you, you grab a brush, you grab some soap, you grab some water, you get busy. You start washing the boat, you clean things, you don't know how to flay a fish, you watch, you learn, and, and you ask if you can help. But uh, just uh, don't be late, pay attention to what's going on, don't be a pain in that. That's it. So that's our boating tip for freshmen, new, boaters trying to get out on the water out there. Go out, have fun, catch as many as you can, get the fish rules out so you're not keeping stuff you shouldn't. Yep. And uh, pay attention, man, be a sponge. Learn it, just just observe and listen. Be a student of the game. So. So. And anyway. we, we all started somewhere. So. Yep. Hope this helps, guys. We will see you out on the water. <laughs>